Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review today. I'm here to tell you all about the latest album from Red Dead Sickness Divine out November 29th on Century Media Records. This album has 10 tracks, 32 minutes in length, and this is the band's third full length album. For those of you less aware, these guys are a thrash crossover band. Alright, so this album has a very good but old school feel to it from a sound and structure perspective. The album never really moves away from what it is. It's a fast ripping guitar riff driven album with very powerful vocals that really uh, allow that blend of thrash and crossover to really come together in one solid record. Very linear, very compact, never moving away from it and absolutely demolishing from the first all the way to the last track. There's just no dips with this record. It's just always a fast upwards moving sounding record. It also has a little bit of a raw feel to it, to its sound. It almost feels like the album was either recorded live or recorded during a jam session. It, it has that sort of roughness to it, not only to the overall sound of the album, but even to the way the vocals come in. And then when you look at the structure and you look at the way the tracks are, are laid out, you feel that as well in that element of the record. It opens up with a song that has a little bit of a built-in intro, very similar to what bands use during a live, uh, uh, a live setting so it kind of eases your way into the record. And then the song that it finishes off has a little bit of a flourish at the end of the track, giving you also that sense of a live performance when you get the drummer and the guitar player just kind of coming together to give a, a sense of closure to the performance. This album has that at the end, so it comes, comes in and it gives a little bit of a closure to the record. So everything about this record really screams live performance to me and the way it sounds and the way it's structured and the way that it comes across. I'm not a big fan of intro tracks and this album has a few sc scattered throughout the album. I'm not a big fan of them. I think it would be better placed in a way that the intro tracks are part of the actual track because in this record you have these intros that kind of bleed in into the following track. So they kind of become one, uh, two, two different tracks become one and I understand why they do that, that, that sort of thing but to me uh, it just doesn't really play well overall in my opinion. I would rather have the album have those intro tracks, those bridge tracks, be part of a, of a song than having the two separate. I understand why they're separate, but to me it just makes more sense because when you listen to the tracks on Spotify or any of these streaming services, you're not going to get necessarily get that intro playing before it. And to me, when you listen to the album from beginning to end and you have those, those instrumental intros, it really works well to the following track that comes right after on the record. So I would rather see them all be as one versus two separate individual tracks. Now, the vocals on the album really add a lot of aggression to this record. They really match well the overall vibe, the overall feel of a live performance of a jam session. And it really add that, that sense of balls to the wall feel that the record overall has. So I really like the combination of vocals and sound as far as this album is concerned. The two are really intertwined and you really feel like one is getting aggression off of the other. So sometimes when the guitars are picking up, you feel like the vocals are catching up to it and vice versa. So I really like the combination of vocals and guitars. This is a really guitar driven album. So I really like the combination of those two factors on this record. Overall, the, the album, while short, I mean, it's only 32 minutes in length. So while short, it really packs a heavy punch and it has this raw sound that in my opinion, makes it very impactful and very memorable overall. Now, as far as songs are concerned, I try to pick three songs that offer a little bit of, of uniqueness to them, that have something different. Uh, one, in my opinion, has great guitar solos. The other one has an incredible bass line. And then the uh, third, well, in this case, perhaps the second, has uh, a killer cowbell. So these are three elements that I really love, bass, cowbell, and killer guitar solos. And these three songs all have one of those elements in it. I want to start with Cheap Me and Safely Graze, a song that has great tempo, really guitar driven song as all the tracks on this album are includes a slower bridge in the middle with a cowbell that ha adds such a nice really flavor to the heavy riff that the song has it really gives the listener a chance to catch his breath before the onslaught returns so i really like that aspect of this song i really like the feel that it has and i, and I like the that that addition of that cowbell in the middle really adds something different that you're not going to hear on any other track on this album uh, returning, once the solo gets in, 
The solo is really magnificent. This track has a really great guitar solo, and in my opinion, one of the best on the album. And I really like the, the layers of the solo. The solo really feels like has other solos being super imposed into it, and that adds a different feel, it adds a different atmosphere to the way the guitars come across on this specific track. Uh, the, tr the track almost goes full circle and it gets a lot more aggressive as it gets towards the end. But to me, the two main components of this song is definitely the, the way the solo is coming across with those that feeling of superimposing different solos to make one really long and extended solo and obviously the cowbell bridge in the middle. I really like the flavor that that added to the song. Next, Path of Discipline. It starts off in a more methodic, with a more methodic approach. But once the intro is done, once the song gets through the, the that intro, that those few seconds at the beginning of the song, you get the real aggression and intensity coming out in absolutely soul-crushing fashion. It, it has a more methodic feel in the chorus and it's more straightforward, heavier in the verses. That's the dynamic that you're going to get out of this track. It really gives the sense of peaks and valleys to the song as you're listening to to this track, as you're moving forward with it. Every time it moves from moves from the verses to the chorus, you really feel a dip in intensity, but it picks up in heaviness and it's a lot more methodic. Following the second chorus, you get a, a really heavier, slower riff, and then builds into the solo. I really like that dip at that point because it dips in aggression, it dips in intensity, but you honestly feel during that portion that something is brewing, that something is coming, and that something is the solo that overall matches the intensity that the song has specifically in the verses. This to me is a song that really has a magnificent solo, that really incorporates a, a, a huge piece of what this song is all about. The intensity, the aggression of the verses are picked up by the solo and then really pumped out to the rest of the track a magnificent stretch uh, of guitar melody in that solo. Last but not least, Ravage. This song has great dynamic, very similar to Sheep Me and Safely Grace. It's a song that has a great tempo, great dynamic from the first moment all the way through. Uh, unlike Sheep Me and Safely Grace, this one doesn't really have any dipping moments, doesn't have any really bridges uh, that really dip in intensity. It's a song that's very dynamic uh, from the beginning all the way to the end, but it does have great bass. The bass is really predominant on this track and to me was one of the things that really uh, attracted me to the song because you really feel how predominant it is. It just adds great texture to the song. It makes it heavier, makes it more robust and it makes it thicker. Uh, the song doesn't change flow from verses to chorus. Like I said, it's a song that has a great dynamic all the way through. It doesn't really have that dip, those peaks and valleys between verses and choruses. It's a song that just has a very uniform, uh, linear approach all the way to it. It, it slows a little bit towards the solo, but it's the perfect segue to the solo that comes right after. And the solo is absolutely blistering. It's just like, it, it just destroys everything around it. So I really like the fact that, that you have a very dynamic song, very straightforward track, no dips between verses and chorus. The only really dip that happens is during that, that lead, that, that segue, that lead way into the solo. So I really like how that happens on this song and I really like the the intensity that gives to the solo. It makes the solo feel a lot heavier, a lot more intense than if the song was all the way straight through aggressive and intensive without that slow little dip there right before the solo. Following the third chorus, the song enters into a much different feel and a much different vibe. It almost becomes a little bit more sludge, almost becoming two songs. You have a song that takes you all the way to the solo, and then you have a very separate song that follows the solo all the way to the end. And following the solo all the way to the end, it's a more sludgy, uh, the song is a lot slower, more methodic, and then it feels like it's losing pieces, it's losing parts as it's moving along. It loses the guitars, it loses uh, the bass, it, it, then it becomes just the drums. Obviously, you lost the vocals, you don't get any more vocals following the solo. So it has a very strange ending to it, but makes the song very unique and very interesting. All right, guys, this is it. This is Red Dead with the brand new album, Sickness Divine, out November 29th on Century Media Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.